make of that. Uh, the airbase runway was not damaged. And according to the Russians, we don't know if this is true, uh, but the, uh, uh, the six MiG fighter jets that were destroyed last night were under repairs, but the, uh, many of the other Syrian warplanes at that base were not damaged. That's what the Russians are saying this morning. Uh, do you think this is more war theater? Uh, why is there a concern now about Syrian civilians, but we have had little concern uh, from D.C., especially in the past few months, about Syrians fleeing uh, their country and dying on the way out? And should Congress have been consulted ahead of time? 813-239-9663 is our phone number. Let's go to Andrew in Dunedin. Andrew, thanks for calling. What would you like to say about last night's attack? Good afternoon, Rob. Um, good, good morning to you, Andrew. Oh, good afternoon, good morning, my apologies. Um, I'm a little, uh, having served in the military, your prior caller had mentioned the horrors of chemical warfare that are described in your training, yes. But, and, and it, but I'm a little troubled by the drumbeat for war being all about outreach. That's not an adequate rationale for military intervention. Uh, being angry, being outraged. No, there has to be, if you're going to get you to a military force, it has to be an interdict, worse force. And I don't think that's what we're seeing. At least that's not the rhetoric that I'm getting out of uh, the administration. Uh, the purpose of this, I sadly, I, I think that you're hitting the nail on the head with more fear. But even assuming a genuine motivation, the motivation just strikes me as absolutely wrong headed. You know, we're not a, we're not a child to lash out in anger with 60, uh, 50 rather than 60 uh, cruise missiles that are going in and dropping on population. That's not the correct use of military force by a nation of laws. Uh, so I'm deeply troubled by this. Now, is this possibly a right shot 2.0 or at least set up for it? That is not out of the realm of possibility. But even assuming all good intentions, even assuming everything is genuine, it still doesn't strike me as the correct application of force. As upset as uh, President Obama was about action, he never seemed to act out of his emotion. He seems to act towards resolving the problem. And I don't see how, again, this administration has done anything to make it clear what they see the outcome as being from their actions. That's all I can react to. And, and Andrew, just a quick question. If, if this was indeed the base from which Syrians, and if the Syrians did it, from which the Syrians launched the chemical weapons attack earlier this week, on those civilians, if this was that base, should President Trump have taken out uh, the uh, the uh, uh, the runway of the base? Well, taking out the runway of the base, but I think there are what four or five other air bases. I think that the again, it's a hollow move to okay. sit here and take out one air base when, it, depending upon the form of gas attack and chemical attack. You know, it's, it's a far, far more wicked weapon that doesn't require air strength. So again, it just, it, it misses the point to even talk about the airbase. What is the objective other than being vengeful? Okay, um, Andrew, thanks a lot. Thanks for getting your views in. There you go, thank you. All right, good to hear from you. Uh, we got an open line, 813-239-9663. Let's go to Elizabeth in Riverview. Elizabeth, what do you think of uh, what the president did last night? Uh, well, he's, he's a precipitous gentleman. I think we can all agree on that. Uh, if what the Russians have given us for information is truly information or just propaganda, what happened to the other missiles? Where did they go? They didn't evaporate. Have they killed more civilians? What do I don't know. I, you know, I don't know the geography of the area. I, I you know, all I'm doing is, uh, is reading what the uh, oh, yeah, Russian Defense it. Ministry and, spokesperson and said. And I assume that the American report on damage or lack thereof will come in time. And I, I hope they are not quite as dire as what the Russians say. Thank you very much. All right, Bye. Elizabeth. Thanks a lot. Good to hear from you. Eight one three. 
239-9663. Here's some more emails. The emails are just pouring in. Um, Trisha writes this, it's interesting that uh, President Trump's tomahawks caused no real damage to Syria's aircraft except to a handful in disrepair. Of even more note, no Russians on the ground were hit. Sources report that both Syria and Russia had advanced warning of Trump's showboat attack. That's uh, Trisha's email. And uh, Russia writes this, how about the simple fact that Syria should not have chemicals to do harm to anybody, including their own people? Why would anybody ask if it was intended for ISIS or not being that they shouldn't have it to begin with? Uh, that's to Russia's view out there. Thank you for that. 813-239-9663. Klark writes this, the caller who mentioned the $6 rise in the price of a barrel of oil, I have noticed myself an increase of 25 cents per gallon in the last week. Uh, yeah, gas prices have been going up. Uh, thank you for that. And Catherine writes this, I do not support war. Trump, the great deal maker. Really? No deal here and no surprise either. We do not know who is responsible for the chemical attack. I don't believe our story or the Syrian government. It sounds a lot like the WMD debacle that's disgusted in St. Petersburg. Let's go back to our uh, telephones. Our phone number, 813-239-9663. Let's go to Susan on Anna Maria Island. Susan, thanks for calling in. Hi, yeah, Susan. thank you, Mom. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, okay, great. Um, well, I would have felt a lot better if I had woke, woke up this morning to the news that they had done something humanitarian and taken our resources and money and brought refugees here. I, I would have felt a lot better if we had gone that route. And and uh, so, uh, do you support what the president did last night? Not at all. I don't think that I, war is never the answer. And you know, we who knows? I mean, who 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 is being killed? You know, civilians, everything else. I just wish that we would go back to being humanitarians that the United States is known for, and you know, taking these refugees. That that's what we really should do. All right, Susan. Thanks a lot. All right, we're getting the views of uh, folks that live here in the Tampa Bay area and folks who are listening online around the world about what they think of the, uh, the U.S. missile attack on Syria last night. And let's go to uh, Rick and Brandon. Hey, Rick, you're on. What would you like to yes, say? Yes, sir. Uh, if you ask me, I believe it's all political theater. Uh, it's wag the dog. And it, it is his miraculous turnaround on the Syria is all from Jared Kushner, I believe. This is a way to distance himself from Russia in everybody's eyes, and I believe it's all political theory. He doesn't care about the babies in theory. He doesn't care about the babies in America. So I think it's all political theater. All right, Rick, thanks a lot. Thanks for getting through on the phones. Um, and all right, so you're hearing a lot of different points of view here on WMNF in Tampa. Uh, here's... Um, James, who writes, uh, what goes up must come down. Where did the other 26 land? Well, you know, first of all, I'm getting that uh, report uh, via the Associated Press from uh, the Russian Defense Ministry, who says three key things, very interesting. He says that essentially 23 of the 59 Tomahawk cruise missiles uh, reached the Sheyrat Air Base uh, last night, 26 missed. Uh, the uh, Russian spokesperson said the attack last night destroyed six MiG fighter jets of the Syrian Air Force, which were under repairs, but didn't damage other Syrian warplanes at that base. And the Russian uh, military spokesperson also said that the Syrian base's runway was undamaged by last night's attack. Uh, so we don't know if that's true, but uh, if it is true, I think those three items are very significant. 813-239-9663. Let's go to David in Tampa. David, you're on. What would you like to say? Hi. Uh, thanks for taking my call. Uh, I just want to say I totally don't support what happened yesterday uh, back in that airfield. And I think that the key thing that everybody is missing during all of this is it doesn't matter how you die in the war, chemical or if it's a bomb, uh, innocent women, innocent children are dying all the time. Uh, also at our hand and uh, last night's effort was the effort to uh, bolster his uh, ratings. All right, David, thanks. Thanks for getting in on this. Uh, and it's good to hear from you. And uh, you are listening to 88.5 FM WMNF in Tampa, just taking the uh, pulse of the uh, community right now. Let's go to Michael in Bartso. Hey, Michael, you're on. What would you like to say? 
Well, uh, I think that it's wrong that Trump didn't get confirmation from Congress to do this. I think it's very wrong. And, I, I, you know, it's a shame that these kids got gas over and all. But he, he can't step out of line like he's doing, and he's doing this every day. You know, and uh, this just this, this totally wrong. That's all i got to say about it. All right, Michael, I'm glad you got able to get through. I think some members of Congress now are calling for the president to go back and get authorization if he wants to do any further attacks. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's totally right. Yeah, I, I think uh, I read just a moment ago that Kathy Castor of Tampa has asked that. Um, uh, so, he's Michael. Stepping out of lines, man. He's stepping out of bounds. Yeah. All right, Michael, thanks a lot. Uh, yes, sir. Good to hear from you. And let's go to uh, Stuart in Clearwater. Hey, Stuart, what do you think? Hi. Uh, why doesn't the U.S. know the results of the, the attack? Well, they're not yeah. at the base. They're not. I mean, I, they're not at the well, base. Well, we have satellite coverage. How do how do they know what they used to attack in the first place? Where the uh, attack, the gas attacks came from? Well, that's a good point. It'd be it'd be good. To, uh, McDill uh, direct the central command of McDill directed this operation. It'd be good for them to have a press conference to say, you know, to answer these questions about what the Russians are saying. Yeah, I'm sure they have this information. And the uh, fellow who spoke earlier to ask the experience in the military. Uh, his points were right on. He, he was spot on on all his points uh, on everything. I fully agree with him. And, right. and you don't go to war over emotion, for sure. Yeah, okay. that was yeah, Thank Andrew's you. call. Okay, Stuart, thanks yeah. a lot. Let's Thank go to Jim in Tampa. Hey, Jim, what do you think? Well, listen, uh, I have uh, uh, some issues with the whole coordination of all this. We have an airfield in Syria. We have two destroyers somewhere close by Syria. And we have the Chinese premier in Florida. Now, uh, this attack occurred uh, uh, Tuesday, and uh, and by Thursday morning, we have two destroyers with 60 cruise missiles. I uh, it just seems like the 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 players are in place before the event happened. Now, uh, I just I just curious and a little uh, taken back by the whole coordination of all this uh, that uh, uh, in two days we have all the all the uh, 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 information from uh, intelligence services that this is exactly what happened we have two destroyers with 60 cruise missiles located in a firing uh, within firing range of uh, this airfield and gee we have the, the the premier of uh, uh, of China uh, sitting next to this guy. I just uh, it, it all comes together really nicely. Uh, and it wasn't it about six weeks ago we had the premier of uh, Japan uh, sitting there and uh, during some some kind of a uh, uh, a terrorist attack. Of, uh, and it just uh, things are just. It just get becoming curiouser and curiouser. Thank you. All right, Jim, thanks a lot. Thanks. Well, there's a lot of, certainly a lot of questions, and we don't know all the answers, and let's hope that uh, we begin to get some answers uh, soon to a lot of the questions that uh, folks have raised here this morning, including the questions that I raised. If you want to comment about today's show, please call us up, 813-239-966. American army who went there and to remove Saddam Hussein from power, which is which he was another dictator in the area. But in Syria, you have people who really want freedom, who really want democracy, and people who really want to change are able to change, who want to establish a new government. So when we ask for the American help, it's like we are asking for the American help, not like because we want to go to Iraq because they do have very powerful weapons, demolition weapons, or whatever you call it. But like because Syrians want want this help, so it's way different. And in Iraq, unfortunately, what what we did or what Americans did, they went to Iraq, they removed us, uh, they removed Saddam Hussein from power, and then they handed on a silver plate to Iran, and that makes Iran more powerful. Because in Iraq, the population is divided by like almost 50 percent each between Sunni and Shia. So the Americans give like give Iraq to Iran, and Iran supported this government, their Shia people, like their group, against the other. And that's not really the real way to establish a new democracy regime, because they support one side against the other, and that's, that's really, really wrong. 
But like in Syria, it's way different. You have almost 85% or 80% of like the majority who, who are being controlled by a really small minority in Syria and who really want to change, not because because like religious differences, not really, because even like I had people like from Assad's like religious group who really want freedom, who really want to change, even Christians, even Muslims. Syria is way different than Iraq. There's no way you can compare. Well, uh, Jim, thanks a lot. Thanks for your question. Thank you. You know, I think that question goes to the fact that um, a lot of Americans fear that if, if we remove Assad, uh, that there's going to be a power vacuum and that even the free Syrian army, the forces of, of democracy, will not be strong enough because you've got these other players there, like ISIS back from Syria. That's what many Americans believe. And then uh, uh, the Assad government backed by Iran. So the, the forces of democracy won't be strong enough against those two powerful that, forces. That's why what I said, like, you can't really, okay, let's say American attacked Assad right now and killed him. There is no way you're going to have a stable area. But when you have, as I said, like the only solution probably and the only like possible solution is to have an offline zone where people can go back, establish a new government, be ready to get over them, take over Damascus, the capital. And then when you have a, a strong army, if you, when you establish a free Syrian army to fight against other radical groups or like to take over Damascus and protect it and then beat other radical groups, you know. So the only way, I guess, from my perspective is to establish a protected area in Syria where everyone can go back establish everything from scratch, like a new regime, a new constitution, and new army. Amar, um, what do you do, what will you do when you graduate? Uh, my plan is to stay in Tampa for a few months, and uh, uh, hopefully I'll be able like uh, to travel, because my plan, ultimate goal is to go to the west, to California or Washington state, and I want to do my master, so I want to study for GRE, so like over the summer and then apply for schools for my master degree. And you're uh, graduating with a degree in computer science? Computer science, information assurance, yes. Uh -huh. So you want to go to a, a graduate school? And a graduate school, I want to do robotics. Uh -huh. I mean, I, because I believe it's like the future, and this is a good way to change the world. Do you want to start a company? Hopefully one day, who knows? Well, thank you so much for coming by WMNF. Great to meet you, and, and great to get the, your insight as to what thank you life so has been like for you. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to share my story and like, the story of millions of Syrians. I, I, I hear so much misinformation about what life is like in Syria and other countries in the Middle East on other radio stations, so it's great to hear uh, your uh, experience firsthand. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Congratulations, too, on your degree. Thank you. Thank you. Well, if you want to comment about today's show, please call us up at 813-238-8001 and record your comment on extension 115, and we'll play uh, your comments back tomorrow morning. At uh, 11 o'clock, my guest. Yes, <clears throat> I'd like to ask the guest a question. Yes, hi. Can you hear me? Ask, I'd like to ask the qu guest a question, please. Okay, that program ended. If you want to make a comment, you can make a comment on uh, all questions. On the like this Uh-huh. And Okay. Okay? Yes. Sir. message about the program that I do on the radio. You can do that after the beep. And also, this uh, recording is to tell you that uh, you can leave a message for me if you're trying to contact me. So, hold on to the beep. Yes, Rob. This is Levi. I do not really choose to resort to name calling. Um, however, you did call me crazy. And I am beginning to believe that you are semi, if not fully, fully retarded. Um, and that's a compliment because the only other uh, words I could put together is an evil coward. Um, you had a caller call in and he was evidently from Syria and you just so happened to pull out the information um, that the um, the Syrian regime is bombing civilians which is, of course is the ongoing current theme of the day and has been uh, for some several years now. Um, 
Would anyone care to discuss what the origins of this war and uh, the uh, preceding wars, such as in Iraq, Afghanistan, and Libya? Or are we just going to point fingers all the day long? Plenty of discussion has been had about the war in Iraq and the prevailing notion is that the president at the time of the United States um, is to blame and the vice president as well. Well that's fine. Um, nobody has held, been held accountable. How many people continue to suffer, have suffered, and have died? Um, there is little discussion about the Afghanistan war, I believe, because it is ongoing. And someone, somewhere, is afraid of something. Now this war is no different. In fact, it could be even more of a deception, seeing that it is done covertly by hiring these mercenary groups underneath the umbrella of terrorism to conduct the affairs and for what purpose now I've mentioned probably maybe two years ago now about the company Genie Limited of which on the board sits uh, Jacob Rothschild uh, Rupert Murdoch and Dick Cheney, who had made an agreement in 1993 to uh, protect resources in the area of Golan Heights that had been uh, always underneath the control of the Alawite regime. Now, based on recent history, it is reasonable to assume that this war has to do with resources, particularly fossil fuels, and the ability to run a pipeline through that region to extract the resources from Iraq as well as in Syria and to bring them to the European region. Uh, it has no benefit to people in the United States other than perhaps the financial backers um, in which um, will always uh, reap uh, the rewards. It is up to us people here that are called to be representative of the United States military to speak out against this. Over 200,000 lives and not by the fault of Bashar al-Assad, yet our own so-called government who staged this war to begin with and because things didn't go in their favor uh, they choose to blame someone else. Now you are a director at WMNF, the Pennant Radio, and you should know that the media twists the narrative to fit their agenda and gives us a selective amount of information. Now I am not saying I am on any one side. I am simply saying that people need to start to tell truth and don't wait till it's over to begin 
your assessment. It seems like people wait until it's safe to say the right thing, until it's popular. Well, you know, I am not one of those people. And if this war was the other way around, then I would probably point my finger in the other direction. However, I see it for what it is. These are oppressive people relying on the same framework that was designed to enrich themselves. And they are obsessed with proving anyone with any other idea wrong. It's just as some of your callers have stated. You cannot just sit there on your ass and talk all day, every day, because you will get the results that you see. Action is required. He's been he's been in, in power since uh, late January. But my point is, is that, okay. But my point is is that he's been very hostile uh, to Syrian refugees, and now suddenly he's saying, okay, now I'm concerned about civilians in Syria. Uh, they shouldn't be conflated. Those are mutually exclusive. One has to be a, the strike against the air base had to do with drawing, excuse the expression, a line in the sand. No more chemical. So you, don't, so you don't think Number this is, two, you don't think yeah, this is theater? Like, bro, let me finish. Okay, but okay. go ahead. All right, so the other one has to do with our national security and the capacity to properly vet refugees. Once they're properly vetted, then they can come in. Yeah, but, 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 but Eric, they, they've always been properly vetted. It takes two years once you start the process of trying to come in. And most of the folks are not uh, young men of military age. A lot of the people that are trying to come in are women and children. But my point is, um, does this look at all like uh, war theater to you? What? War theater. I apologize. Repeat. War theater. War theater. Is it a movie playing at the... <laughs> is, it, is it a show? I mean, the missile... You know, these are cruise missiles. They're highly sophisticated. Some missed. Half of them. 26 of them. Based on your sources in Russia, I think you're colluding with them. <laughs> okay. All right. We don't know if the Russian report is true, but... Uh, uh, finally, as, as well, we don't well, know if a lot of the MSNBC report is true. We don't know if Think Progress reports are true. We don't know whether Center for Democracy are true, but you continue to repeat them. Well, I, you know, I, I don't know how much Center for Democracy or Think Progress stuff we put on the air. We do, we do try to do original interviews with <laughs> original interviews with newsmakers, and that's what ends up a lot on, on this show. Hey, we understand. All right, Eric. Thanks a lot. Great to hear from you.